Guys, look how cool these things are. These are called Speedos. We're trying to get Ballyhoo to come to the Chum Slick, but these guys came. They're like giant torpedoes. <laughs> there you go, Dad. <laughs> Mickey, you said you want to cook up the Speedos, don't you? I didn't say I want to, I'm going to. <laughs> you saw the meat, it looks good. Yeah, we cut one open to use for bait, and the meat is super white. Enough talking, I'm going to start catching some. I'll get one before you, Mick. Haha, <laughs> watch. You got a better piece of bait. <laughs> oh, no! Come on, eat it. Go. Oh, he's got it. Oh, no! Haha. <laughs> Kind of it's like catching gogs. It's fun. Uh oh. Come on, get Look at these things. They are crazy. So cool. I get him to eat it and spit it a lot. <laughs> I'll show you guys how it's done. <laughs> oh, this little sea turtle just came up in our chum slick, poking his little head out. Is it? A lot of yellowtails, a lot of ballyhoo, a lot of speedos, a lot of blue runners. First fish at the new spot. Look at it. Yeah, it's talking. Alright guys, so we moved from our bait spot and we anchored up in like 65 feet of water. We just put our chum out. I just threw out a little chunk of ballyhoo. And I saw something swimming around in the back of the chum slick, but I couldn't tell what it was. I hope it's not a blue runner. It's a bonita, isn't it? Or a blue runner. Big blue runner? Big oh, blue runner. healthy blue runner. All right, well, first big fish of the day in the new spot is a blue runner. I'm not going to keep him. I'm going to get this hook out and let him go. We're about to change spots, and my dad finally got something. Look at this truck. Yellowtail. Yellowtail? Or a mutton. It's a mutton. They're pretty. Definitely pretty. My favorite fish to catch. Swim straight down to the bottom. What do you got, Vic? A shark? I didn't even know he was on. Oh yeah, Brian's hooked up. This was at a new spot out deep in about 97 feet of water. Oh, it came up. Oh, a yellow jack, oh, isn't it? Yes, that's what it was a school of then. Good yellow jack. Uh, you might want to gaff that thing. Check that out. Heck yes. What you what you wanted, Brooke? You happy? Yep. Pull it up, Dad. My dad just caught this big yellow jack, and I've been talking about how I've been wanting to catch yellow jacks recently. These guys are really good to eat too. Look how pretty, Brooke. Look at the blue. Look at oh, the blue yeah. lines. Cool. Brooke, Brooke is smiling right now because she hates how I hold fish. She tells me over and over that I hold fish wrong, but I don't care about the camera so much. As long as I got a good grasp on him and I know he's mine, he's gone in the cooler anyway. Yeah, but if you just had that hand on the other side of his gill, then we can see him better. Dad's hooked up again. It's like a mutton. mutton. Another, that's my second mutton of the day. Today's YouTube channel is sponsored by Brian Crenshaw. <laughs> <laughs> Almost 16 inches. Oh, he shot down like lightning. Just stopped. I don't know if I got cut off. Oh no, here we go, here we go. It might be there. Come on. Let's try. Oh, he's there all right. oh yeah, baby. It's not very big. First fish on bottom. We switched it up. We were trying to catch yellowtails on little jigs, but then we started a bottom fish, mostly because my dad was bottom fishing and he was doing really good and we all got a little bit jealous. <laughs> it isn't. Doesn't look like a blue runner. Oh, it's a mutton. It's a, it's a mutton. Yeah. Might be legal. What? Yeah, it might be legal. No. Nah. It's close. That's worth a measure. These guys have to be 18. He is 17. close to 17. Not big enough to keep, but always a pretty fun fish to catch. Yep. Hook barely in his lip.
This is what I'm fishing with. Ballyhoo plug, no tail, no head. Just like that. With about 15 feet of leader, because muttons are very leader shy. If they see that weight bouncing up and down on the bottom, sometimes it turns them off and they won't eat. There we go. Come on, baby. Yeah! This one's bigger than the last one. <laughs> Burke's got a good one on. This one might be my legal mutton. Yeah. Oh, oh man. He's digging, you see that? Mm-hmm. He's gonna be legal for sure. Oh yeah, if that's a mutton, he's legal. A mutton. Oh yeah, good yeah. job, Brooke. Oh, he's legal. Oh, he might be so close. <laughs> he might be so close. He's legal. I think so. He's legal. Man. Man is right. <laughs> he is a quarter of an inch short. Nope. I pulled it right from his mouth. I felt it. Oh, he wants it back. Oh yeah, now he wants it. He said, you try to steal, steal it from me, I'll show you. Yeah. Know what? I'll show you! <laughs> I got him. It's smaller. Yellowtail? Mm -hmm. Yellowtail. Nice one too. Nice one. Oh, baby. There we go. That's a keeper yellowtail. Oh no! <laughs> He's full of chum. Someone pooped all over me. Oh, bro. That's what I get for catching you. I'll take it. For a nice dinner, I'll take a little poop on me. <laughs> and yelltails have to be 12 inches to keep. This guy is... 15. 15 inches. So, that's a nice yelltail. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. How many times can I say here we go before I, I fill the hook? It's there. It's there. You sure that's a blue rod? I don't know. <laughs> oh no! Big yellow tail! Big yellow oh, tail! Big yellow tail. That one's Woo! even bigger than the first one! Heck Look at yeah! That How big is this guy? Say 18 almost, no? Oh, 17? 16. 16. The last guy was 15. That's a nice yellow tail. The 12 inchers, a lot of times we don't keep them because they're kind of small and they don't make that, they don't have that much meat on them. But these bigger guys are perfect. Perfect eating size. I think I got a mutton and it might be legal this time. I know I say that like every time, but this time I think it's legal. What is it then? Your runner. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's what I say every time. This one. <laughs> well, it's just like an unrespected fish. Hey, that's a big one. <laughs> well, not my legal mutton. Look at this. Damn. I was about to reel in and... Mystery fish. I don't know what this is. But I'm getting smoked. You know what I think? Maybe a king reel, uh, hit it while you were... I don't think that's a king. I think it's a shark. You do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't dispose of them, please. Put them in the live wall. Crazy. That's a shark. Pop him or stop him? I'm at my... Splice? My splice went out. I don't burn my thumb up. Hey guys, so we are back home at the fillet table and I'm gonna fillet up this yellow jack and a lot of people confuse these with jack crevels, which a lot of people don't really like to eat, but these guys have really good white meat in them, so I'm gonna show you guys you can eat them as ceviche, you can eat them as sashimi, you can eat it raw, you can cook it, whatever. 
So I'm gonna fill this guy up for you guys now. So I made that first um, cut by the head, and now I'm going to go down its back. This is the biggest yellow jack I've seen out here, but when we were in the Bahamas, I seen some giant yellow jack swimming by when we were diving. Just gotta get over this rib cage. To the other side. Beautiful. Not too bad. There, look at that filet. Looks delicious, doesn't it, Vic? Mm -hmm. Some of the best eating fish right here. Got right above the rib cage bone. Didn't get into the stomach area, which is good. You want to try to always avoid doing that. I'm gonna put this in the cooler until I get the other half off. Anytime I'm filleting something new, this is basically my go-to way to fillet anything. Unless I know it has a big backbone down the spine and I know that if you were to just run your knife down, you're gonna get caught on that backbone and miss a lot of meat on the, on the belly side. So if you know it's gonna be a fish with a big backbone, like a dolphin or a tuna, then I wouldn't do it this way, but any kind of snapper, grouper, mackerel species, kingfish. I'm gonna put this in the cooler. And Vic, you want to look at the stomach? Let's do it. Let's see what's inside this bad boy. Alright. Doesn't look like there's really anything in here. I think he's going to be empty. Sure looks like it. Well, that was boring. He was hungry. Like I always say, poke the eyes before you throw them in. Because the eyes allow air to keep, stay in them and make them float. Not only do we check the stomachs because we are interested to see what's inside them, also, when you throw your fish into the water, the stomach holds air as well. So when you first throw them in, it might initially sink, but after the fish eat some of the meat off of the bones and stuff and break it down, it'll float up to the surface because not only does air keep in the eyeballs, but it also stays in the stomach and then it floats and then it rots and then it smells and all of your neighbors hate you. <laughs> so there we go. And now all my catfish down there and little mangrove snappers, we'll get to eat that guy. I'm gonna skin it just like how I skin anything. I always start at this tail portion. I like to have it on the edge of the fillet table like this. And just work my knife back and forth. So here's my yellow jack fillets. I cut out the bloodline. Jacks a lot of time have a very thick red bloodline. So I cut the bloodline out and now they're ready to cook. So I will meet you guys back in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Tonight I'm making a whole dinner on the grill. I decided to not only cook the yellow jack, but also to cook a couple yellowtail snapper. I'm going to grill some mushrooms, tomatoes, and zucchini, and then also toast a nice loaf of French bread. So let's get to cooking. The first thing I did was throw my yellow jack fillets in a Ziploc bag and mix up some Italian dressing that I'm going to use as a marinade. We use this zesty Italian dressing on our salads a lot and it's delicious. You need a quarter cup of white vinegar and three tablespoons of water. Then add the seasoning pack and shake it up. Once that's mixed, add half a cup of oil and mix it again. I poured this over my fillets and put them in the fridge to marinate for about an hour. Now for my yellowtail fillets, I decided to leave the skin and scales on. Ever since I made redfish on the half shell, I've been wanting to try snapper on the half shell. I poured a little avocado oil on the scale side to make sure they wouldn't stick to the grill and I put a little on the meat side as well. I seasoned with salt, pepper, paprika, fresh lemon juice, and fresh grated garlic. I really wanted to catch a legal size mutton to do mutton on the half shell, but these yellowtail fillets will do just as good. The mushrooms I seasoned with avocado oil, salt, pepper, fresh garlic, and balsamic vinaigrette. I seasoned the tomatoes the same way except left out the garlic. I'm going to eventually mix these together on the grill, but I'm going to start out with the mushrooms and let them cook longer, so that's why they're separate. The zucchini I sliced all about the same thickness, 
seasoned with avocado oil and just some salt and pepper. The French bread was super soft and I didn't want to dry it out, so I'm going to just basically warm it up on the grill. I spread on some butter and olive oil, brushed on some fresh garlic, and sprinkled on some paprika. All right, unfortunately with this time change, it gets dark at like six o'clock and it's six o'clock now, so <laughs> we're doing this by flashlight for you guys. So I have this grill basket that I'm putting on my grill and I'm going to start with my mushrooms in there. Eventually I'm gonna add my tomatoes to that, but I'm going to let it shrink down first. I'm gonna put my zucchini pieces up here. Wow, that fit perfectly. If I had one more zucchini piece, it wouldn't have fit. All right, so let's go inside and get our fish. I'm gonna close this. Because I'm putting my fish straight onto the grill, I wanna oil the grill first, so the fish has no chance of sticking. So I'm taking some of this avocado oil on a paper towel. And I'm gonna just smear it on the grill. Here's my yellow tails. Put those babies straight onto the grill. Now for my yellow jack that I've had marinating, I'm also gonna put those straight onto the grill. little butter slices cut and I'm just going to put these on top of the yellow tails. Here's our bread we're going to slide in there. I'm going to add my tomatoes to my mushrooms. Well, I threw together a whole meal completely on the grill and everything turned out really good. Let's see what my family has to say. Everything was good. Brooke's uh, yellowtail cooked on the grill on the skin was very tasty, but that yellow jack, wow, had the beautiful grill marks and the flavor of that yellow jack and the texture was outstanding. And that's the first yellow jack that I've caught in the um, first yellow jacket I ever caught. I had one break my fishing pole about 45 years ago when I was fishing on Dania Pier with an old Mitchell 300. I had him straight up and down, about the same size fish, a nice eight pound yellow jack, straight up and down, went to flip him and snapped my pole. So this was, uh, was a nice revenge. I got to, I got to eat a, a yellow jack about the same size and it was good. <laughs> Good story. We always like to have revenge on our fish. <laughs> on the ones that it's on, decades the, later. on the ones that we lost. Decades later. Huh? It was another great night. 
um, me getting out of the kitchen and Brooke uh, cooked the vegetables and avocado oil and maybe something new that I'm gonna keep doing. Cool. Um, it was delicious. I enjoyed myself again. Thank you. It was a great meal. Brooke and Victor continue to spoil us. Uh, all the different grill flavors, so you can't beat that. And it's definitely a recipe worth trying. All right, guys, you always see us at the end of the videos, whether it's Brooke's video or my video, always saying how good everything is. And you guys are probably like, they can't be good all the time, but it really is good every single time. And Brooke, I've been watching Brooke develop as a young cook over the last year, and she's gotten not only creative, but I mean just her like palette for flavors is really developing, and she did a really good job this time. To be able to put all those things on the grill and to get them off of the grill at the same time, it was really good. Flavors, uh, the, the yellowtail on the half shell, that's something we've never had before and it was really good. So props to you, babe. You did a good job. Thanks, By doing this YouTube channel, it's really made me open my mind on recipes for fish because I've been fishing since I could honestly like hold a fishing pole like in the backyard catching things and being like dad let's try it let's cook it and we always had a few simple recipes and everything was always great but just like coming up with new ideas constantly like I'm in no way a professional chef or <laughs> know anything about like knife skills or anything like I'm just slowly learning as I'm doing this and just coming up with new ideas for recipes and everything and it's so great to just try all these ways. I mean, a lot of people, they just have a few simple recipes and all the time people are like, oh, I caught this, how should I try cooking it? And it's great to be able to try different recipes and have different things. It just makes you excited to go out there and come and bring it home and actually cook it and eat it and enjoy a meal with your family. So don't be afraid to try something new and don't be afraid to try something on any kind of fish. Like just because I'm making it with a certain fish doesn't mean that you have to only make it with that fish. Like. You can marinate any fish in the Italian dressing and put, throw it on the grill. Probably throw it on some aluminum foil so it doesn't get stuck and fall apart. But you don't have to have that exact fish for an exact recipe. Like, don't be afraid to try new things. You know, if you just are always frying fish or just blackening fish, try something new. I'm sure you guys are gonna like it. Thanks for watching as always. Don't forget to like the video and also to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.